Hey everyone, in today's video, I wanna go over Palantir. First, I wanna talk about what is this company all about? It's actually been around for 17 years, or well, maybe more than 17 years, but it recently showed up on the stock market last year. So I wanna go over what is this company all about? I'm gonna talk about the risks with this company before we talk about the rewards, and I'm gonna share my perspective on the valuation and why I decide to make a tiny itty bitty position in Palantir stock. By the way, I wanna give a huge shout out to all my subscribers. Thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart for like helping me build my YouTube channel and of course, continuously supporting my channel and watching my videos. Let's get back with the video. Okay, so what is this company all about? This company is a huge data intelligence company, okay? They used to work with government organizations like CIA for like 17 years and actually did it without being profitable because they were building a customized solution for the CIA. And they were taking all their unstructured data, which is basically saying that their data was all over the place and trying to make sense out of it and do some predictive analysis. And now they've taken the software and they're looking to commercialize it with other businesses, okay? So this is key. So they've been working with the government for the last 17 years and they're taking this customized software and they've templated it so that it could be used for more companies. So I think this is gonna, this is what actually got me thinking about, hmm, about my position, why I actually want to start a position in this company. Because I actually worked in, I used to work in the IT sector. I get it, I get the sense of the amount of information. It's so overwhelming. You got, you know, I used to also work in mining operations and you got data points, sensors everywhere, and then you gotta do something with it. How do you, and, and you could spend a ton of time sifting through information, and what Palantir seems to be offering is a system, an integrated, vertically integrated software that is software as a service model that can be used for big scale operations like mining, like the government, like other businesses, like. 3M, like IBM, and they've actually partnered up with IBM. So I think this is like key because there isn't a lot of competitors. In fact, in this space, I can't even really see any. And if you're, you can see that according to this presentation, there really isn't any. I would say the closest competitors is actually IBM and Microsoft because they do also business intelligence and they do predictive analysis and they collect a lot of information, and try to um, provide software as a service and consulting services similar to like Palantir. But it sounds like Palantir is trying to have it a much more wider, wider scale application using software that they built, purposely built for government organizations from the last 17 years, which happens to be probably the most complicated uh, problems that they had to solve. Now here are some of the risks with Palantir. The first one, it's unprofitable, it has been unprofitable for a very long time. And honestly, we don't, we have no idea when it would become profitable. In fact, if you watch the CEO, he has actually stated that he's going to reinvest a lot of his capital back into the company to help grow it. And this was actually music to Kathy Wood's ears. Now, we're, we're like, so what this means is that this is an insanely long-term play. Second thing is that we have no idea if the software that they built, which has been highly customized to government organizations and now of course being used and for more commercial applications with other businesses, whether that's going to really stick. I mean, they formed a ton of partnerships. They got a lot of contracts. They got a lot of partnerships going, but it's, it's a very, very niche market. I mean, they're huge in the data analytics. That's their like bread and butter, but we really don't know the execution yet. We don't know the satisfaction. It's so, it's really, really early stage. And because they are intentionally becoming unprofitable for a very long time to reinvest the capital back into the company, they could be wasting a ton of resources. Okay, when it comes to its rewards, well, Palantir, this is where it really shines, okay? There is really not a lot of competition in the space that Palantir is working in, which is highly specialized software as a service for big data sets and trying to make a huge sense out of it so that it can improve business operations so the businesses could make more money. Now, you're probably thinking that like Microsoft, there's Salesforce, there's IBM. Microsoft and IBM actually do work on pretty customized solutions, uh, software solutions. And of course they provide software as a service, but they don't have the same business model as Palantir. So that's probably a pretty weak competition. 
The other thing is that Palantir is trying to solve a very, very complex, like many, many complex problems, like trying to use the customized software that they built for the government and trying to leverage that and basically offer it as software as a service to healthcare organizations, to mining operations, to energy companies. So if they can succeed on that, well, let's just say that the total addressable market as, as quoted in Palantir's um, presentation is 119 billion. And right now Palantir only has like revenue of around 1 billion. Now granted the majority of that revenue, about 60% is from government uh, contracts, but this is just the beginning because the total addressable market is 119 billion. Another big, big reward I see is because it's in the space that is highly trending. I mean, we've got machine learning and artificial intelligence and uh, big data and data analytics. That's huge. And everyone, every organization has a huge problem with their data sets. So if Palantir can really break this market share, I think like they're going to be growing for a very, 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 very long time. But now, of course, we got to look at valuations because in the end, valuations do matter. And I will tell you, I had a really difficult time valuing Palantir because, well, first, just there's not that many companies that you can compare to. And secondly, it's solving such a huge problem that uh, valuations are really, really hard to justify the stock price right now. So I'm going to give you a fair warning. I made a baby position in it but only so that I could scratch the surface and really cover the company more in depth and put it on my watch list. But I would say that this company, I would say has a medium risk versus high reward, meaning that I'm expecting Palantir to actually be a super volatile beast. I wouldn't be surprised if it dropped 50% in the next five years. But I think that this is like a type of a software company that's trying to su tackle such a huge problem that I think the reward ratio is so big because like I said, the total addressable market is 119 billion and it only makes $1 billion in revenue right now. So that's why I say it's a medium risk, but high reward. So it is one of my more speculative plays, but it's a, I mean, speculative for a big cap company. Okay, so let's talk about valuations again. Now, the only other company I could compare like Palantir to is Salesforce because I don't think it's really fair to compare it to IBM or Microsoft because IBM and Microsoft have been there for like, they're like dinosaur companies. I mean, I don't mean like they're ancient and slow. Well, I would say IBM's a bit slow, but uh, they are, they are relatively dinosaur companies compared to Palantir. So I was going to, so I decided to compare Salesforce because Salesforce has a much more higher growth rate, even though it's been around for a very long time, but I think it's, I think it's more fair if we compare it to Salesforce. So Salesforce made around $21 billion of revenue and its market cap is, is at 194 billion. Okay. So which gives it, uh, compared to its revenue and versus its market cap, that's like nine, times okay nine times price per sales ratio but if we use that same ratio and then use that for palantir not based on the revenue today but say projected to the revenue of five years which is around four billion this is quoted by the ceo if he executes right then like nine times four is 36 billion you can see that the market cap is actually 49 billion so i would say palantir you can't work the numbers I think you have to do a really, really top down approach. If the total addressable market is 119 billion and it takes 10% of that market share, well, that's like well, $11.9 billion of future revenue, okay? Say it takes 5%, which is really what, you know, uh, the Palantir CEO was targeting the next five years. I'm looking 10 years, 15 years. Then I could see if they execute well, then they're just going to will build more and more and take more of a market share, which is 119 billion. So this is a huge long-term play for me. This is like, okay, I'm going to just buy it and then forget it because the valuations in five years don't make any sense. And that's why I'm saying this investment is a medium risk, high reward. I'm expecting that. Well, this company could totally drop 50% and it would actually make sense because it only makes $1 billion in revenue. 
So it's actually quite pricey. There's no way you could wrap your head around the valuation. But if you hold, I feel like if I hold it for the long term and it starts executing well, well, this is more of like a, my moonshot investment where I could see it's got a lot higher return. And it would, it seems silly for me to not make a small position in it. Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful and super informative and you get to know a little bit about Palantir and the valuations and basically that the valuations don't make any sense but coming at it from a total addressable market which is really what I'm like tying it to. 119 billion dollar huge market and it's only got one billion dollars of that revenue in that total addressable market then I could see that there's a lot more room for growth but of course it comes with quite a bit of risks and I would say this is a medium risk versus high reward ratio and I'm comfortable making a tiny baby position it just so that I get skin in the game. If you like this video please give me a thumbs up smash smash that like button. Anyways I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.